the guys on the date with didn't know who Paul Rudd was. So I was like, I really, this is like, I can't <laughs> You're not getting married. Yeah. I just felt like, Hollywood, look out. And he was like, why are you so ugly? No. no. It was a choice that I wasn't necessarily happy that I made. I'm not an overly sexual person. Sometimes I like to feel sexy, yeah. but it doesn't mean it's for somebody else. Right, yeah. yeah. Like laugh lines. Yeah, because you laugh. Because <laughs> yeah. you want to be a person who never laughs. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the Hollywood Reporter Roundtables. I'm Lacey Rose. So this is the comedy table. So I'm going to start on a sort of lighter note. For any and all of you, is there something you'd never do for a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> never do? Um, yeah. Yeah. Never. Anal. I don't think I'm honestly taking it too far. Not for a laugh. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to say no to that. You're just going to definitely. I, I mean, it seems like, yeah, oh. you're questioning oh. that. I feel like I'd be down. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Depends on the circumstance. If it's presented in a in a, in a good manner, then in maybe. It, it's all about context. It yep. is. Yeah, yep. I guess. And the yep. relationship. And Fair. consent. Yes. And consent. Mm. Mm. Way to bring it back, Tracy. Mm. I've heard you talk about how you used to do comedy. I mean, I'm thinking of Mary Catherine Gallagher, where you're literally sort of hurling your body into into chairs. Yeah. And you now think a little bit differently on how to sort of take care of, of your own body when it comes to comedy. <laughs> yeah, I was just, it was before I had children that I did that crazy physical comedy where I would throw myself into chairs and do more <laughs> dangerous stuff. And now that I'm a mother, I just don't want to do that. And I feel differently in my life and I don't want to hurt my body like that uh -huh. anymore. I'm much more cautious. Did it hurt? I would never feel the pain when I was performing it at all. And then but later. then after when I woke up in the morning, I would be bruised and bleed and cut. And, and then, oh, but I, yeah. I kind of liked the way it felt because I felt like I worked really hard and my muscles would ache and I felt like I really threw myself into the performance. Mm -hmm. So I liked the way it felt. <laughs> you did. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Quite literally. What's the last time it. you did like a big physical thing? That's a good question. Well, it's funny that you ask about that because after SNL, then years later, I would be asked to do these big like stunts on shows and this and that. And I, I, I really didn't want to do it. It made me nervous. Um, Could you say no? Yeah, I, well, sometimes I was in the situation where I felt scared, like, I don't want to do this, and but I would felt like feel like I have to do it. But now mm -hmm. I'm pretty, to answer your question, I had to do it on an <clears throat> independent movie, and um, I, I don't want to say what it was, but the guy forgot yeah, the to dog. bring <laughs> knee pads. The stunt man forgot to bring knee pads and brought the other person pads, and I did get hurt. That's not cool. Yeah, that's not cool. I, I was just that. like, and it yeah, I don't. I won't say what it is, but but it was kind of like, well, you know, I felt like I was holding them up, and and I was just like, nope, you're gonna have to wait, you know, yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. trying to put the problem on me, and I was like, sounds like you got a problem, yeah, you and I really did for yourself. Yeah. because you could be a woman and be like, want to mm. fix it and apologize <laughs> that you're taking too much time, of course, and um, I did not fall for it. Good, nice. <laughs> awesome. yes, queen. <laughs> what is it reminding you of? Oh. Uh, Oh, just, oh, the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, did I do it again? No, no we love not that. at all. It was a natural game. Oh, Tell your, your body? Your I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. Anyway, what were you saying? That's Wait, hilarious. but do you remember when we had rights? I remember it's that. Funny. It's so it's funny. funny. Yeah. And like over our own <laughs> our body. Yes. Yeah. Choice. Anyway. So yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm so sorry. What were you that asking? Was fun. I was thinking, I don't think my body can handle some of the physical stuff. Like I wish I could. I'm, you know. But I get that that laugh is, is enticing. It's too good. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah just oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The physical stuff is a whole other league, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah. league that you invented. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Actually, that's yeah. so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, seriously. Mm -hmm. I'm about to turn 50 this year, and in my head, all I hear is 50 of those! <laughs> Get that leg up and do it! 50! 50 of those! Sorry. What? So good. 
so that picture good. of um, Jennifer Lewis kicking her leg. She's never going to stop. I was like, that's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, doesn't do that? But by the way, like, no, and I don't want to. No, I don't no, need that expectation, Jennifer. And and now, by the way, she has to have two props on the side. So like, she usually gets two people. Oh, so she can get the leg. Well, just to make sure that, that she's not going to not be on the I don't think it's for comedy, though. I think it's a show off. No, it's yeah. just fabulous. Yes. Yeah. As she should. When your show came out, a lot was sort of made about the idea that this was a sort of a different side of you than people were used to. I'm going to quote the New York Times here. Ooh, okay. um, she sings in only some of the episodes. It? Her wardrobe leans towards flannel. She sits on no one's face. Check, check, check. Um, <laughs> check, check, check. <laughs> I'm curious, sort of, are there sort of conversations around... Uh, sort of t showing a sort of a different side? Are there reservations around that? Or is that totally freeing? Uh, I actually thought it was pretty freeing because like my stage stuff can be kind of wild and full contact and physical. Um, and, uh, and it's tiring, <laughs> you know, like full body stretches, hydration, a lot of drinking. And I wanted to like, you know, not have to do any of that for this. <laughs> so we just said something, I want to do something closer to like the real me, you know, uh -huh. no bra, a little more mellow. Amy, you know, knows me. I'm pretty I like know you don't wear a, bra. a shut in. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I actually thought it was kind of freeing. It was like the first time I really felt like fully just on set. I usually get really nervous, uh -huh. you know. And um, I don't know. I just felt super grateful to like, you know, uh -huh. just do uh, no bra, no reservations, just me. I love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And. For a lot of you, I mean, what is that sort of navigation between sort of an on-screen or on-stage persona and who you actually are? And, and is it, do you guys also find it sort of freeing? I mean, Amy, you literally are going on tour. You're a happily married doting mom and you're about well, to go I'm on married. the whore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're a married woman, doting mom, that's still, that's, that's true. Checks. That's true. That's okay. true. But like, that you're about out. to go out on what you've dubbed the whore tour. Yes. So like, what is, is, <laughs> yes. yeah. <laughs> but I'm curious, like, so, I'm on the horde tour now, but it's not, a, but it's not, <laughs> well, she might be, I cut, so I should be getting a cut. I will do something. I think yeah. you get close, I'm getting closer and closer to who I am on and off stage. Yeah. Mm. It was definitely used to be fully a persona. Uh-huh. And yeah, and that feels really good to get, to get closer, closer and closer. I mean, I, I love playing just a monster, just like the worst person white woman um but but I'm, I'm getting further and further away from that when do you think that happened it's happened gradually over uh -huh. time um just educating myself and seeing the harm and yeah. uh joking around about yeah things that are harmful and taking more responsibility and having it not just be about trying to sneak into this boys club but you know having both feet in the door and mm -hmm. saying like what do i how do I want to be representing myself? And uh -huh. what do I want to be saying? Selena, what about you? Um, oh. And Selena? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you've, you've been in this Republic eye for so much of your career, and you were a sort of a role model for kids, and, and now you're making choices as an adult, as a producer, mm -hmm. as an actor. How do you think about sort of how sort of that, that persona versus what you actually want to do for yourself? I think I've done a pretty good job of removing myself from that yeah. because I'm pretty honest about my imperfections and um, but I took control of the narrative of my life once I started becoming um, older because growing up in it, I didn't really have a choice. Mm. I wanted to be there. I just knew that because I loved what I did, but I... Not, uh, that's not necessarily what I wanted. So mm -hmm. now I just, no, I understand, like Amy said, that there are certain boundaries that I need to set for myself. Um, and I respect and adore so many people, um, but I got to do what's best for me. For you, mm -hmm. yeah. And when it came mm -hmm. to saying yes to the show, I mean, you know at that point, you know Martin Short and Steve Martin are <laughs> yeah. my uh, One of my friends um, who didn't watch my show, I, I don't care if they do, and they were like, so, do you have any hot co-stars? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, in a way. Steve Martin, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm but, uh, pretty hot. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
Uh, no, it, sorry, I didn't even answer your question. But I love that. What did you sort of bring of, of yourself to to the role? Mm -hmm. And you're also a producer on this thing, which which means that you do have more of a say than yeah. you otherwise would. That was really fun, mm -hmm. especially collaborating with Steve and Marty because mm -hmm. they both have such specific takes on their characters. Mm -hmm. And even when we're obviously off screen, they're constantly doing bits and running them by me, not like I have a say, but just for fun. And it, it, I've learned so much, like even when Amy was on set, it's just so cool watching people in their element, especially when it comes to the stage that is comedy, you mm -hmm. know, and there's so many different levels of it, and I nothing makes me happier. I love being with two guys, but being here is probably one of the coolest feelings to be around women in this world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is a good feeling. <laughs> Tracy, one of the things I, I feel like I remember hearing you say over the years is that you didn't, on Blackish, you didn't want to be sort of wife wallpaper, and mm -hmm. that you pushed really hard to... To, to not be that and, and have a loving relationship and sort of all these things. What Can you speak to this idea of like what you had seen, what you didn't want to replicate, and, and why that was so important to you? Well, um, I think particularly on Blackish because the story is not told through, it's told through Dre's eyes. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just not really interested in playing somebody who is only a person in relationship to somebody else. And when I look around at all the women that I know, we are who we are. It's not like we don't know what our point of view is unless yep. we're there to set up our husband's joke. Yep. So, um, <laughs> yep. so, um, That's so that was really important to me from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, it was what was, it was written in there. Yes. Uh, but then as the show progressed, I just, it's always important to me that there's a sense of who I am off screen and inadvertently often. Um, I know you've probably also heard this, but doing lady chores, like uh -huh. uh, somehow inadvertently I would be there cooking when he came home from work. I would be mm -hmm. chopping or I would have laundry and I would always say, can I just have a computer? Mm -hmm. um, can we flip it? Can I be coming home from work and can Dre be chopping? Because uh -huh. I like to That's look great. at things not just in terms of the character in the scene, but then in the larger canon of television and who Ooh. a woman is on TV mm -hmm. and then who a black woman is on TV. Uh -huh. And so it was really important to me. I mean, I think it became annoying, um, but I don't care. Yeah. I use well, my voice sorry. and I'm always, yeah, yeah I, I'm, I'm just like, I, you know, I think it's really important to continue. I think we, we all know, I mean, you just said it, but the, um, the images and what culture creates, we mm -hmm. know culture influences policy, but it's also expands how we see ourselves and how others see us. Yeah. And there's so many unconscious messages about who we are as women yep. and particularly black women. And on Blackish, the idea that Bo was not only a full person who was all of these different things that had a life off screen as well as on screen, had a point of view and was thriving and not just surviving was really important to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and I, and to your audience as as yeah. well. Do the rest of you sort of have examples of uh, experiences of, of that pushing to make s your character or or other characters are more fully realized? I think uh, honestly, writers don't all. It's not on purpose. Like we are, sure we're not. so inundated by this. I think sometimes people don't even realize that they're writing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm just not interested in playing it. No. Yeah. I, in my position, I'm a writer on my show and creator of it. It's easier to go in having my female characters just completely fleshed out. Uh -huh. If anything, we had to go in and work on our male characters. Love oh, like, that. That is something I struggle with that's, as well. That was, you said what? I said that's something I struggle with as well. The male characters? Yeah. No, you do. No yes, way. I do. Well, yeah, I making like, them full. Wait, what does that yeah. mean? Yeah. I, I read them as just like, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the women are like fully, fully realized yeah. uh, human mm -hmm. beings. And yeah. the guys, I have to. You, know, you have to go, have to go in back, a little yeah. bit more. And mm -hmm. I had fully, you know, I had the archetypes laid out, uh -huh. but that was part of, in my room, I said, okay, well, I want to make sure I have a few male writers who will understand things. It's weird. I'm working in the complete opposite, I think, of how Hollywood has worked for uh -huh. most of its time. Like, my yeah. room is predominantly women, you know, like, predominantly black women. Yeah. And, and then there are queer women and all the other <laughs> stuff. And then we have, like, we have, like, what do we have now? Inclu not including the co-producers, we have three male writers, and that, but everybody else is women. And that helps us make just very fleshed out um, leads of this series. And we have four 
female leads. And so they all are different mm -hmm. from each other. And particularly with having three black female leads, the fact that they all get to be different um, is something that I hear a lot about the show where people are like, they haven't seen it in that way before. But I think that's the power in writing your own um, content. And when you're not doing it, I don't want any actresses to have to come on my show and feel that they have to fight for it. I want uh -huh. them to come in and feel like, you know, like, oh, wow, I'm here and everything's all good. Like, I don't have to, like, fight for anything. And I think, you know, so I don't, yeah. That's cool. I yeah. love what you did, what you did with um, Janelle James's character yeah, on the so show good. because it's so, like, <laughs> Just how you would think a, a male character would be written, but it's like, hey, we're dirtbags too. Yeah, like, yeah. And, yeah. And you know, those, and to me, that is equality. Like, yeah, that is like the totally. yeah. like being a piece of shit. It's yeah. like, yeah, and you know, it's like all my sort of preconceived notions about the male characters that I've written and stuff. It's it's all because of other stuff I have to undo with you know, how toxic masculinity has affected me. So it's like, mm -hmm, it, you know, mm -hmm. you really have to do take a lot of undoing and, and staff the room in, in mm -hmm. an inclusive way where you can be getting all these different perspectives. And I think that a lot of the work that we do in our room, like all the all the women in my room are fans of all the women here, like yeah. literally every woman <laughs> here. And so all the work that everyone did before us allows us to feel we have more space to... Yeah have these fleshed out characters because people have seen Amy before, Tracy, yep. like it's, so yep. now we're like, feel like we get to build on the next steps, which is really exciting of what mm. we look like on TV. Yeah, to I see Molly, like to grow up seeing mm. Molly, to, and the shows that I loved, like Laverne and Shirley, mm -hmm. or Kate and Allie, like they weren't these. Uh, Kate and Allie, what, no one says anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, you know, it, like it, they weren't women looking for permission. And so mm -hmm. like, I'm so grateful to yeah. have, you know. So I was gonna say, yeah, I remember thinking that when I was coming up in comedy like I think I didn't want to react against boys because uh -huh. then because I thought then you're just reacting I want to yeah. just come from inside yeah. and yeah. be a girl yeah. Yeah. be a woman do my own thing yeah. you know what I mean yeah because I had seen some type of comedy where it felt like the girls were like we can be like you and yeah, yeah. I, yeah. And it was a reaction mm -hmm. yep. and it didn't feel authentic yeah that's so, my least favorite style of comedy I'm yeah. Yeah. It's like mm -hmm. well, I'm do too I'm like, Fine. and I have been meaning to get away from that <laughs> <laughs> But wasn't, oh, that symptom, wasn't that like symptomatic of the times though? Like it was weird because when you were coming off, I felt like it wasn't reactive. Then it became reactive. I don't know. I feel like we also go through waves and, and what yep. we look like as women on screen looks different. And it's funny uh, too, like as a mother of a boy mm -hmm. and a girl, I'm yeah. like, oh, you know, boys, they're just writing, you know, their own thing. And it's, they're just being themselves. And so we can be ourselves. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that makes sense. It no, is. completely. Yeah. I, I have to say, I'm, I really am lucky being, at least on my show, at this experience only. I feel equal, uh -huh. and I, I think yeah. that's so important. Mm -hmm. And they have a, they have a comedy about them mm -hmm. that's it's very smart and witty instead of crass. And they've really made me feel like I can speak up what I uh -huh. want to speak up. They they actually care about my opinion before they move forward with anything. Yeah, it's or a true collaboration. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I have, I don't know. I doubt that really happens a lot. You I'm know? sure. And they also have. They're yeah. open to it in, in a way. You know learning yeah you can mm -hmm. say that's actually like a really problematic thing to say and here's why and instead of the oh you know it's mm -hmm. like they listen yeah mm -hmm. and sure. that's unfortunately still pretty rare yeah yeah uh mm -hmm. yeah yeah they <laughs> <laughs> say so um Quinta, you tell this amazing story that i've heard of, that i'm hoping i can sort of open up to everybody but a story about meeting paul rudd oh, at God. a movie theater yeah um him. yes I hope um, this gets him canceled. <laughs> <laughs> this will not be the thing. Gets <laughs> this will not be the thing. <laughs> Definitely not be the thing. He said something to you that sort of changed the sort of trajectory of your career. So yeah, I, I guess do tell. Yes. Yeah. This story is funny because it's like become embarrassing because uh, I told it to Seth Rogen on a podcast and, and yeah. Seth told Paul and Paul was like, I have no recollection of that. But I did, I did. No, I think that did make it better because he wouldn't have any recollection of right. it at all. Like it, ma it made sense for me. It was the biggest thing in the world, but to him, he was just being like nice to a, a, a person, I think. And um, so tell so, us. Okay. So I was at a movie theater in Philly and I was young, just with aspirations of doing comedy, but I kind of was keeping them to myself because I do, I, I'm just a kid, a person from Philly. I don't come from, it just seems so far-fetched. So I just, whatever. And I was on a date with a guy that 
according to religion, I was supposed to marry uh, because we were on a date and we were thinking about kissing, so we were supposed to get married. Uh, and, <laughs> and so Paul Rudd was in front of me at the theater and I lost my mind. I could not believe Paul Rudd was in front of me at this theater in Philly. I was just like, why? I thought I was hallucinating, but um, he was there shooting a movie. And so I tapped him and I was like, are you Paul Rudd? You are Paul Rudd. I'm seeing this, right? And then the guy I was on a date with didn't know who Paul Rudd was. So I was like, I really, this is like, I can't. <laughs> You're bring not getting married. Yeah, no, I was like, I just can't marry yeah. someone who doesn't know who Paul Rudd is. It meant he didn't see so much of my life, what was formative uh, to me, yeah. like comedies. Yeah. And it was just tough. But in the theater, we went to see Inglorious Bastards. We were the only people in the theater. Um, and it was Paul Rudd and his bodyguard and me and this guy. And so I was talking to him and I didn't, it wasn't like, it's before I was here, so I didn't know it was annoying to like, talk to people. <laughs> he was, was probably always, happy to he, have you talk to him. Yeah. And it was only four people in the theater. Right. It was like, hey, what's the weather back there? But he, I said, you know, I'm actually interested in doing comedy. I like went to the Second City to like take classes. And he was like, that's great. Like, I'm actually doing a movie right now with Steve Carell. He did, he went to Second City. I'm like, yeah, I know Steve Carell. Was, <laughs> he, was, he was doing um, that movie with Steve. Evan Almighty? Four-year-old virgin? No, no, it was that small. Oh, dinner, dinner, dinner for schmucks. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and so and he was like, I was like, I don't, I want to kind of do comedy. He was like, Well, if you want to do comedy and you love it and you can do it, then you should do it. He was like, There's nothing that should stop you or get in your way. You should absolutely pursue it. And I was, it changed my life. I stopped talking to that guy. I <laughs> made a plan to move to um, L.A. And That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. It was, it was life changing. It was like, <laughs> yeah. so I, I needed like more reasons to lie. I know. Yeah. I almost hate telling the story now because it makes people love him more. And I'm like, that's enough. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> but in, in the sort of spirit of positivity, like for the rest of you, are there were there sort of passing comments that somebody made along the way that did mm. sort of change your trajectory, even if it's in some small way and not yeah. in the sort of big way? Mm -hmm. And if it happens to include Paul Rudd, like bonus points, <laughs> but it doesn't have to. Mine's Steve Carell. Oh, oh really? Yeah, I, I was cast in this movie um, called S "Seeking a Friend for the End of the World," mm -hmm. and I just had like two lines, and I improvised some of them, and de they definitely didn't <laughs> make it into the film <laughs> with good reason. But walking back to my car, it was like six a.m. You know, in the morning, shooting all night. Walking back to my car, Steve just goes, "Amy, right?" And I said. Yeah, and, and that, was it. <laughs> yeah, that, that was really all I needed. No, he said, I just want to, what you did was really funny, and I just really want to encourage you, oh, you know, and I just wanted, yeah, I want you to really hear that, that I'm, I'm encouraging you, you know, and I was like, thank you, you know, I was yeah. just mm -hmm. on air, just, and so I really try to do that. When I mean it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. I mean, some people, I'll go, they'll go, I've been thinking about moving to New York, and I'm like, you're good here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you're good. But other people, I'm like, yeah, I think you can yeah. really do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's I guess I you've it. been that way for me. Really? Yeah. I was, <laughs> no, I was like a baby when you first met me. I was so young, and yeah. I, you gave me an opportunity to you be were so on funny. Show, How so. did you guys first meet? On the, I mean, on it's technically my, on the show. I was yeah. like obsessed with her and made it very clear to the world. What's that all this I past tense about? <laughs> <laughs> I am obsessed. Um, well, well, yeah. I got older and started looking. Yeah. Just kidding. Your eyes open but, to the truth. Uh, no, it just I got to be on her show um, at the time, and she knew I was a fan. Yes, um, so funny. and it was just yeah, it was just a quick and little. And she was bit, so was funny fun. on it. I was like so. Thrilled, you know, when fun. you actually meet someone and they're really funny and get the joke and you don't have to like, explain anything. Yeah. Maybe he's also given me quite a few opportunities. Like, you know, so. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. But I mean, there's a, I had sort of a confluence of, I don't know if that's right, you said the word, I try to throw them in and then I regret it. it as soon as I say it. I, 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 I sure. sounded yes. like it's, it's you, but, um, you got it right. Um, so I, I had a band, well, I, I still have a band, but it, um, one of the guys in my band was um, Ad-Rock and Beastie Boys, uh -huh. and um, we used to play Catch in the Park um, in Brooklyn, and my friend Murray Hill, and Champagne Jerry and stuff, and we were catching fly balls, and I was out, and I was, like, started singing this song about different kinds of tits. And then, as you do. As you do. <laughs> and then, well, there are so many kinds. There, there are, are so it's many true. kinds. It's true. So then we, you know, as soon as we, like, were leaving uh, the field to go get snacks, um, <laughs> <laughs> he, <laughs> like 15 minutes later, let's get some snacks. A lot of fly balls. You got to get some snacks. Um, um, but he was, you know, I was like, I just wrote this 
because he was like, you should be writing original songs. I was like, okay, I don't know. Because um, I was mostly doing covers at that point. And then I was like, I wrote this song about all these different kinds of tits. And he's like, and I sang it for him a little bit. He's like, that sounds like a hit, you know? And I was like, really? Huh? And, you know, he's like a rock and roll Hall of Famer. And, it, and it's sort of like, I needed somebody to kind of, at that moment, tell me that it wasn't like a silly, stupid idea. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of silly, but... And I said that to him. I was like, well, it's kind of silly. And he's like, well, silly worked for us, you know, and it'll work for you, too. Uh -huh. There you go. So, you know, and then not just right around that time, Amy's like, do you want to come on the road with me? And I was like, I, was like, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I'll really work in comedy clubs. And she's like, you just trust me. You're, you're going to work. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, it works yeah. too well. I actually, <laughs> I, I, I wasn't able. I, nobody can follow Bridget. Like if you try to follow her on a show, that you're so screwed. she would. Mm -hmm. She would wet close, on the stage. It gets really moist. She there. would close. I, she basically headlined my shows. Like it's truly Ooh. like on the road for years. It's like I go okay, and now here's a surprise guest because, you know, Bridget <laughs> is impossible to follow. I still, I mean, she's my favorite performer, and just seeing, mm. getting to see the audience see her and mm -hmm. just. Yeah. But I, I think what's really, what I also learned at that time is like, you know, I came from like this sort of downtown world where it's like everybody's sc scratching mm -hmm. and crawling yeah. and trying to get yeah. ahead. But yeah. what really happens when you have the most success, success is when you're sort of cheering on those around you, yes, you know, absolutely. and then it's like, mm -hmm. and it became, I was like, it, really, it was a real shift in my thinking, like to, which has also been really informative of how we write my show or how we do our show. It's like, it's going to be so much less interesting if the character's just about, or if the show's just about me. It's the mm -hmm. more you sort of know about those around you and you sort of showcase their talents, it's um, a richer, mm -hmm. better experience. So yeah. Um, yeah. thank you for that. And I thank you. <laughs> and I thank Adrock. <laughs> I had a friend when I was growing up named Ann Ramped. She's still a good friend of mine. Ann and Ramped. we were little girls. Ann Ramped. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we would just play house together. And um, we, we love this Robert Altman movie with Karen Black and we were young like maybe 10 or something and she was like I could picture you doing that like like being in the movies and I said you could yeah. she was like yeah like with a southern accent and I was like, oh, <laughs> so, cute. so so um and then she really wanted to be a country singer so she she asked me can I practice my country singing for you and I was like sure she wanted to be like Emmy Lou Harris mm -hmm. so she would sing for me in my living room but I couldn't watch her I had to turn my back to her because she was too shy oh, no. and she'd be like singing and I was like that sounds good so uh -huh. we she was my first one who mm -hmm. believed and I that could. woman is now Shania Twain <laughs> <laughs> that's, beautiful. Yeah. That's, really that's sweet that is so really sweet. sweet it's like it only takes one it was yeah. just like one Absolutely. little person yeah, you feel it doesn't have to be a fan person it yeah. can be totally yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. what I have a million accounts that aren't I it's so funny when you guys were telling those stories I was like I, I actually can't think of that I think of the some of the negative things that I heard uh -huh. that actually knocked me into hmm. like making a choice that I wanted to do this whether I was being told I could or not I love okay. that. Yeah. so what did I mean oh no watch yeah. me uh, <laughs> yeah. it was no it was it was actually less it was less, oh, no, watch me. It was, the first response was, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm too delicate. Like, I can't, like, my, my soul can't take the constant rejection um, mm. of what the industry was matching up for mm -hmm. me with. Yeah. Um, and I was really shy growing up, but my shyness was, came out in a really big personality because mm -hmm. it keeps people just as at bay. Uh -huh. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. So, I get it. So I was like really silly and gregarious, but I was, I would, you know, I was hiding inside. And um, I just had a couple of moments. I sang on stage um, in my, in a high school talent show and started on the wrong key, voice cracked, <laughs> and then started crying. Mm -hmm. And um, the whole high school was like, you can do it, you can do oh. it. And my friend, so actually I thought of a good story. <laughs> and my friend Tara came on stage and was like, you can do it, try again. Uh -huh. But then I think of the agent who let me go and told me, this is, this is a major, because I held uh -huh. it for so long. Full names, please. I will not. And let me tell you what she said. She. You come with all this stuff. Your mom's somebody, you dress great. And you know, you're so fun and you go in a room and you just don't pop. <gasps> what you, do you just know? don't pop. So we're gonna let you go. 
So Tracy, what do you Tracy do? Tracy can type, type what? Me. Yeah, just. Type <laughs> what so, what rhyme with? Okay, so, so what do you do with that? And how do you oh, turn well, around? Oh, I couldn't get out of the room. I felt, you know, in, on the office chair, they have those uh, wheels. Uh -huh. I felt like my heart was stuck <laughs> in the it wheels. Wheel, yeah. And uh -huh. she just kept moving it back and forth. <laughs> and it was bleeding. Oh, and my eyes were trying to uh -huh. not come out of my head with uh -huh. tears. And I couldn't get into the elevator fast enough. And then Ooh. I remember my thought was, I can't do this. I can't do this. And then I made a decision after two days of crying of, you know what, I will do this as long as I'm doing it to have fun. Uh -huh. And my amazing. career took off from there. Mm. It's interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious for, for, I mean, for others, because it brings up an interesting point. There's a lot of harsh feedback oh that God. you get in this business, <laughs> but, so, but sometimes it can. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes, like what you're saying, it can actually prove helpful. It can actually sort of propel you. I wouldn't you. say helpful. helpful. No, that, that one <laughs> right. wasn't. There's there's no there's right. I don't know. Oh, helpful helpful. In, in the sense that it can bring more, I mean, as somebody who's got so much hate on the internet, it also with that comes a lot of love and people who maybe wouldn't yeah. have even heard about you if there wasn't yeah, such yeah. <laughs> noise being made about how awful you are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, see, yeah. I had a situation in New, York in New York no. City where I wanted, my, uh, I was a struggling actress and I didn't have any money. I was waiting tables and my friend had gotten these full colored headshots and I was like, I want the colored headshots so I can stand out. Uh -huh. So I hired the same photographer, used all my waitressing money and the makeup and hair was included with the with a fee for new headshots and I got all done up and I was sitting in the chair and like feeling like a million bucks and the photographer like got behind the lens and was like, you know, and I felt so beautiful. Uh -huh. There was a fan on me and I just felt like Hollywood, look out. And he was like, why are you so ugly? No. Yeah. Wait, what? Why are you so ugly? What gets and his girlfriend was next to him and she was a model things. and she was like, shut I do want to say his name. She was like, shut up, that's so mean. Like <laughs> And then we started the photo shoot. Oh, and then we started the photo shoot. That was the beginning of the shoot. Oh God, yes. I'm so I think sorry. So, I think it, I'm, I'm with you really on sorry so that happened. So I'm with sick. you on that. And I'm, I'm amazed at where amazing. do people get the get wherewithal the fucking, and to see the, say the things. And it's wild because I mean, horrible. At least he was right there. So if you could punch him, if you wanted yes. to punch him in the yeah. face, you could. But then when it comes to like the inner, and it also is fascinating because you may say you have the ability to go look and see what the person looks like. It's like, eh, I look like you. <laughs> <laughs> what's going on? Like we look the same. Like what's happening? And <laughs> but with, this is it so funny is, too. I was so thinking crazy. too. I don't know about you. I, I don't look at myself when I'm filming. I don't want to look at myself. I don't really want to. I, I want to be natural. I want to age. I want to. Yeah. So I don't want that to affect my performance. And even to this day, if I even like actually just now we did a little yeah. footage before I caught a little glance and I was like, I look old. I had a quick thought of like, mm -hmm. well, I'm looking older. And that is hard. But I was like, it's okay, honey. You know, just uh -huh. yeah. no. You know what I mean? Just yeah. it's hard. Life. It I mean, the first I mean, thing I, I said to you. I have to work at that. I'm not going to kid you. It's hard. I think somebody once said that people want you to freeze at the age where you first became famous. Oh, well, yeah. sorry. Absolutely. So <laughs> aging is an interesting thing as yeah. a woman, mm -hmm. but I try to be gentle on myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, it's you a are, choice. Yeah. You are so someone that I have thought you can be funny and hot. Not that that's what this is about. Agreed, at all. by the way. But... I'm sorry. Just yeah. throwing a but, little. But you, love. Just, yeah, I mean, you are you truth. are one of the you are one of the women that helped define mm -hmm. for me because mm -hmm. I I I was. It's not that I grew up watching. I hate when people say that to me. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry, no, Tracy. I didn't, but we were. We were <laughs> I know. Said that but, no, no, no. But we, we were we were about the same age, yeah. I think. And so I, I'm watching somebody, and I was like, Oh my God, see? Mm -hmm. It's like the Lucille Ball. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where you can be this gorgeous woman, yeah. like all, this idea that you can only be one thing, yeah. which I have never adhered to, don't agree yep. with. Yep. I think yes. you get hotter with time, you know more, this is evidence of your life, yeah. this is evidence of, uh, like, laugh lines. Yeah, because you laugh. So <laughs> you want to be a person who never laughs. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yep. So, but also, yes. I love how it was like, you, I felt like you were always in control of your, of your sexuality. Like, it wasn't like, like, I felt like you were you were taking care of yourself. Like mm -hmm. nobody was sexualizing you mm -hmm. in a way that you weren't comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Good, thank yeah. you, Amy. That's a huge compliment. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think it takes those 
those people, those places to point it out. It's not that you have to see it to know that it's possible, but boy, does it help. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Exactly. But because, that is such yeah. an element, like the, the sexuality of all of it and how, and, you know, someone like Selena who was, you know, sexualized at such a young age, and but you just, like, kind of have rejected that mm -hmm. and, like, have mm -hmm. really found your own um, style and your own, like, presence that's like you didn't let anybody because I, I yeah. you know I know they put you through a system and it's like make you feel like this is how you have to do it mm -hmm. and especially you're getting that positive feedback when when you know people are attracted to you or whatever mm -hmm. it, it takes a lot to go like yeah I'm gonna go in this direction that's really unfair um, yeah. I actually did an album cover and um, I was really ashamed after I did it I had to work through those feelings because mm -hmm. I realized it was attached to something deeper that was going on uh -huh. and it was a choice that I wasn't necessarily happy that I made but I but I think that I've done my best at least I've I tried to be myself and myself isn't I'm not an overly sexual person sometimes I like to feel sexy yeah. but it doesn't mean it's for somebody else right yeah it be for me but Very how different. much of that is the sort of infrastructure around you sort of telling you that is what you're sort of supposed to be well yeah. I have to be honest I don't go on anything anymore I've said it in a million interviews I'm sure people annoy me Instagrams emailed me <laughs> because all I do is say I don't I don't go I don't do it uh -huh. the biggest part of that is you're seeing all of these other people mm -hmm. And and I can't. Mm -hmm. uh, I Nor should can't you have to look no. that yeah. way. It's yeah. impossible. Yeah. It's just not. I, I don't find it attainable. And the moment mm. I'm not on it, everything else becomes real. Yep. Oh, that's wonderful. So Absolutely. Real. Yeah. And then I'm like, no, I didn't see that. Yep. But maybe you can show me, I guess. Right. I know it's your friends. It's always my friends. I cannot believe they said that about you. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm not reading it. Okay? Thank you, though. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's so I true. I didn't want to know yeah. that. That's so yeah. true. I didn't read it. Huh. I was, it's yeah. not just, it's the, the system. Yeah. Right. It's not just, yeah, it's just the system. Yeah. Um, and the way it tells you that that's, and that's whether you're in Hollywood or not, um, you know, saying that yeah. in order to be this, in order yeah. to be lovable, in order yep. to be um, um, enough, mm -hmm. you have mm -hmm. to be this. And, mm -hmm. you know. In order I, to exist in a lot of ways. Like yeah. people get upset that you're existing at a certain point yep. and not <laughs> falling into, <laughs> like, yeah. it's morbid, but. Some people would rather you just like not exist anymore yeah, like, can you just not exist? than right. to dare challenge what is the perceived uh -huh. notion of womanhood. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm speaking specifically for women because I just don't feel like men have to deal with the same thing. It's not like no. do this or don't exist, but that's something that our, everyone here, just being here is already an act of rebellion to yeah. what- It's an <laughs> act of rebellion, what, of rebellion to be here. To right. be here at all. Like they would much rather a lot of us just like, not like well, yeah. it's, it's interesting because a lot of yeah. you guys are also very outspoken, whether it's culturally or politically, or I mean, and and I think a piece of what gets lost in that is the sort of courageousness that comes with it and the bravery that comes with that. And I'm curious whether it's you're speaking at a rally, speaking out about mental health, speaking out about sexual harassment, do you ever? get nervous about sort of the repercussions of that? And, and do you feel like they come at a cost? They come at a actual financial cost. Um, yeah, but the thing that does scare me is the idea of not Mm -hmm. Not saying and not not knowing even right now with what's going on with the Supreme Court Like I feel like I know I did everything that I could possibly think of to try and help um, But it is it, I, I mean, yeah, these these are like I mean, I, I, I didn't really think about it before you just asked that question But these are like some of the bravest people and activists that I know, you know I mean, and I think people don't even really realize how much that Selena's done for disinformation, yeah. which is the biggest, most silent problem mm -hmm. that no one wants to talk about. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and, and Bridget has really inspired me to, to, to become a stronger and stronger activist myself. Just take yeah. off your bra and swing those tits and get some jobs done. Yeah. <laughs> That's really <laughs> helpful. Just like it says on your mug. It's just on your mug. Yeah, but I think there's a lot of power also in just like, I don't wear a bra, I get really sweaty. It's like, and sort of just, um, I know that that's not like the same thing as like getting arrested yes, or whatever, but like, but showing by rebellion. example, 
you know, um, or who you're going to put around you and the shows that you're doing. Like, this is the way that, you know, culture changes is by the things that people see around them. And, and um. I definitely feel that having this responsibility and this platform that I've been given, it was kind of trained in me to understand that I had a responsibility, but I just, why, why else be here? I want to I wanna be remembered for the things that I'm doing. Like Amy said, that made my whole day. You know, I feel like, uh, what's the point if I can't speak my truth and if I can't, even when I can't say it myself, I gave my platform to so many other people because I was like, I can't speak on this. There are certain things I can't speak on and I need the right people to say what is proper. Mm -hmm. And I can't just, you know, just post a pic and say, I understand, I got gotcha. you. It's like, <laughs> no, not at all. It's not helpful, but yeah. I think I'm like going through an interesting phase where I used to be really vocal, like online and stuff, and I've like stopped because I just don't want to be right now and I want to like take care of my show. My show is not just me. It's like 300 people mm-hmm. under me or yeah. more, and I want to protect them. I don't want to put anybody in a position they don't want to be in. And it also is something where... Like Abbott came out, which is a show about underfunded schools. Once again, I think Abbott falls into the line of like existing alone is like Mm -hmm. weirdly, we didn't set it up to be a political act, but what got attached to it once it was out into the world, which is what happens with art a lot. You don't get to control Mm -hmm. how people perceive or how they attach to it. So this piece of art that we all made is out there and then everyone's having political discussion around it, which is really cool. So in a way, I feel like the best thing I can do right now is preserve that yep. mm-hmm. and um, listen to other people. But then as like a black woman, <clears throat> people have been expecting me to, to come on, give me your, your activist uh-huh. opinion. I don't really have one right now. Like, mm-hmm. I, I really don't, honestly. Oh I haven't, I'm not well versed. I'm not well read enough currently on mm-hmm. some of the things that are going on to speak. So when I get like asked by a reporter or something and like, in your opinion on the, I don't, yeah. I can't talk about, I don't know right now. I can direct you to some people who do, but I do think there's an expectation. And I, I wonder if, how you feel about that, Tracy, Tracy, especially for like black women to like every issue you also are supposed to give us an opinion uh-huh. on, but it's like, but right now that's not my job. Like I'm not a politician. Or maybe you don't want to be deposed at an airport. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Seriously. Right. Though. right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's I, like you don't want to do a press conference right now. You're like, wait, where's my bet? Yeah. And I think there's, and it happens to all women, and for sure. But just to like black women in particular, it's like I'm here at a like producers party. Well, I yeah. don't <laughs> think I need to be asked about every single political issue currently right now. Mm-hmm. And I, it's just something that I'm working through. I don't know if I'll be that way tomorrow, but today. Well, I think yeah. as a black woman, I mean, societally, we know that we are often utilized and not centered, and so right. the 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 act of being and being mm-hmm. safe and being free um, makes people think that you're going to have a point of view. Like, mm-hmm. your beingness in and of itself mm-hmm. um, is a, an act of revolution. So I personally have never, I'd have never had a team that has um, had issue with how I use my voice, so I've never heard that. Um, I've mm-hmm. never lost jobs because of how I speak up. Um, I know that exists. Mm -hmm. Um, I do know that exists. Uh, But I personally have always been the type of person that the expense of my soul, like I can't, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, I have really learned how to be the most, I try my best to be the most effective with what I say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I don't know everything. I'm not a scholar. I'm not an academic. I'm not a politician. I'm a person. You know what I mean? And I know that I have a lot of personal Uh points of view. However, I think all of us are, are use our platforms and position to be able in ways big and small where it's not about publicly sharing right. my point of view, but advocating for those that you're working with, making sure that the friends and the people that do tell you things, you say, no, if you need to say no, you say no. Like yeah. I will have your back on saying no, or, Hey, I'm sorry. I know on this production, you guys haven't noticed cause it seems like everything's working fine. But if you notice there's no black people here, <laughs> anybody else? Like, well, has anybody picked them on? Yep. Like, really, that's so weird that this story doesn't seem to tell that honestly. We're going to do something about that, right? Cause <clears throat> yeah. I'm not going to be able to be staying here if we, you know, and I think we all do that. 
And I think that's part of the responsibility that I have always felt. Mm -hmm. Some of it came from just being a black person in the world. Mm -hmm. Um, Some of it came from being a big sister and feeling like I wanted to make the right choices for, Mm -hmm. as an example. Um, Some of it came from being my mom's kid. Some of it came from like the DNA of just who I am, Mm -hmm. that I'm one of those people that like, if I see somebody that's more vulnerable, I I can't help it. Like I I was one of those people that was always like, that's not fair. That's not fair. Yeah. That's not fair. That's not fair. You know, uh-huh. and so that as an adult has turned into me learning how to be an advocate for um, other spaces and places that because part of my and I feel like all of us are similar. Like my mission is like in life is to make the world a place where people can be safe to be themselves. <laughs> Like yeah, yeah, I, yeah. yeah. it's a lofty, like, but 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 also I mean, you know, and, and my the work the cho- the mm-hmm. roles that I choose, the way yeah. I choose to play those mm-hmm. roles, how I use to how I use my own being and my mm-hmm. body, like it's it is about that for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, can I just share Please. the story about Selena? Oh, we were God. doing press. I, I really admire you. We were doing press for Hotel Transylvania in. Toronto and Celine and I flew back together and we landed at LAX and I have never seen a swarm of photographers swarm around Celine. It was the most, it was insane. And I studied you like anyone would study a superstar and um, you were so calm. And I tell this story to a lot of people. You had people swirling around. I mean, it was Uh mayhem. It Uh was like the craziest thing I've ever seen in my entire life at an airport. And Selena just walks so calm like water. I mean, I don't know how you did it. People like <laughs> pushing in front. And I, so I, I tell that story all the time. You're and so I, I forgot that I've never told you. And I really admire you because I, I, I admired how much you stayed in your body. And I was like, oh, my God, she has to be in therapy. She must have, like, really <laughs> yes, worked I have hard. Been. <laughs> right? Uh, many. Yeah. Yes. So, but I, I That's really. That's so sweet, Molly. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. It was, like, it's incredible. Not, yeah, it's, like, weird. Yeah. And think, she got to the car, and I was like, wow. That's a queen. Yeah. <laughs> it's also, I think, so many people get held back because I know I have been being afraid of saying the wrong thing uh-huh. and yes. to be an, a great advocate, ally, accomplice, it's like you're going to fuck up. And so just to have people around you to say, like, just tell me when I fuck up, like, and I, my heart's mm. in the right place. And, you know, and I think it's good when you can be gentle with other people. If, you know, if somebody doesn't sort of hasn't had some awakening that mm-hmm. you've had, you know, but it's just it's a constant negotiation. Um, yeah. yeah, I was also uh, going to say it's yes, please. It, yes. Um, in the moment. Speaking up isn't always the hard part. It's the aftermath. I'm sure. Like, yeah. I can feel pretty good to speak up. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, ah, ah. Next and, and the, the yeah. panic. Uh-huh. I mean, and sometimes it's not just speaking up. Sometimes it's like the outfit I wore. Sometimes, you know what I mean? Like the, mm-hmm. the backlash of how mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you, you know, this very dangerous neighborhood that is yep. the mind. Yeah. Or not yeah, just yeah. what you said, but but the, the poll quote or how, or whatever, it's, be, how yeah, it's being just, interpreted or any of that. And you know what? Some people, it's kind of like, like in school, like you're doing a show about school. There's people that have learning differences that might not have the verbal aptitude. Absolutely. There are more visual learners. Yeah, and absolutely. there's people that are super verbal. Yeah. Yeah. But schools are still very old-fashioned and they're, they're language-oriented and it's taught with one type of brain and it's really a problem, in my opinion, yeah. which yeah. is so wonderful about your show. But not everybody's good at that. Nope. Right. I feel like I'm not that good at that. I feel like there are better people at that. <laughs> but it's like you're forced to be this certain uh-huh. type and it's 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 a lot of pressure. It's a lot. That's and you, what I'm saying. I'm like, y'all don't really want to hear how I would say a lot of stuff. So I kind of keep quiet and I'll share. I'll repost something someone else. That's what I do. Because I'm like, you don't want to hear me say it. I won't work here anymore. (laughs) But um, And it it has to be so perfect now, you know? So it's like scary. It's like one misstep and you're pounced on. And it's it's hard. It's hard. I literally just one time asked an audience in Tampa. It was during, it was the 2016 election. I just said, I just want to understand why someone would would vote for Trump. Like, I just want to understand that. I don't, I don't, can someone uh-huh. just explain it to me? Mm-hmm. And 200 people walked out and no one could do it, but they didn't mention that like 10,000 people stayed Same. or whatever. It was just this story. And that's how it affected my money mm-hmm. is that, huh? you know, Trump voters, you know, that it might affect directly ticket sales. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But yeah. how nice mm-hmm. to not have those people in the audience, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, not that they're bad, but I just don't think that they're going to, 
like appreciate what I have to say because mm-hmm. you know I think people should all be treated equally. We're gonna end so, quickly on a what's... lightning round. Yeah, but very 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 fast. I'm sorry, I have to interrupt. I have to say something. Please. This myth in Hollywood that like women are not supportive of each other. Like my experience every time. I mean, I'm just meeting you today, <laughs> but like. Uh, so like we just really have each other's backs I like, never do anything for each other I swear other. and so mm-hmm. and this has been that example and I just we need to keep saying that out there I yeah. we got that. each other yeah, yeah. literally <laughs> alright what's still high on your professional bucket list what haven't you guys done what SNL. Have you done? SNL. SNL. SNL 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 anal <laughs> speaking at the White House speaking at the White House speaking at the White House SNL yeah oh wow oh gosh um, did that. I'm going to say directing a feature for me. Yes. Yeah. That sounds yeah. great. Doable. Very doable. Oh, doable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I was just interviewed by Oprah. And I, oh, I, yeah, that was definitely on my Sorry. bucket list. And I went running up my block after in bare feet. I was so excited. <laughs> so excited. Uh, did you say your stories? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's an all, but I, yes. I also yeah. like to host and be the musical guest. Just, you know, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's let's just cool. Do, let's just go on. Because you know that's what Bridget cool. says. She quotes LL Cool J. Oh, yeah, LL Cool J. Um, uh, DDHC, Dreams Don't Have Deadlines. It's right here. That's great. That's amazing. Maybe uh, next season I'll we'll just do back to backs. Yeah, oh, yeah. And comedy was like stand up is actually something you really would. One day I'll try stand up. Yeah. I think yeah. so good. Tracy. Wait, I can see one them do. Bridget invited me over to Amy Schumer's house. Remember the first time I met yes. her? Yes. I was so nervous. <laughs> what? So starstruck. <laughs> <laughs> the best. Time I was I had. so nervous. Remember? <laughs> yes, for the best time. And we did have the best time. Yeah. I so love it. That's well, awesome. Thank you guys all for doing Amazing. this and being here. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So love you guys. That was great. Love you right back. Mm. Um.